not just a familiar face to us, but is also a dedicated servant of the kingdom. So as we gather, I urge you to open your hearts to receive the message that our speaker has prepared for us. So please join me in welcoming our speaker for today, Mrs. Anna K. Lemard Park. Hallelujah. Good morning, family. Good morning, friends. It is such a privilege to be here this morning in this capacity. To all the ministers in the house, trial deaconess, leaders of the various ministries, brethren and friends and family, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is really a privilege and a pleasure to be given this opportunity to share with you this morning. I consider it a blessing to have been given this platform. Amen. And I trust that as I share with you at least five persons, when I say one, at least five persons will be challenged to be a better person. Amen. Amen. So Auntie Sharon told me that the theme for today is be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And so, by the way, I'll be sharing my testimony. I'll be sharing my testimony. Auntie Sherry Ann said, just share, just share your testimony, man. Because sometimes when you hear preaching, you know, you kind of want to say preaching. But she said, share your testimony. And I was so happy to hear that. Amen? Amen. 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 Because guess what? My testimony is what makes me who I am today. Amen. Amen. Many of them going on. And I promise you, I will not share everything because I don't want to bore you. But I'm going to share as the Lord leads. Amen? Amen. And so, be fruitful and multiply. I've made an attempt to tie in my testimony with the theme as best as I can. Amen? So, of course, when we hear the term, be fruitful and multiply, the first scripture that comes to mind is Genesis 1 verse 28. And media, could you project that for us, please? Genesis 1 verse 28. And since we have been on the theme for so long, I'm sure you can all tell me what Genesis 1 verse 28 says. Oh, it's there. What does it say? Amen. However, when I got the theme, the first word that jumped out at me was the word fruitful. The word fruitful. And immediately, fruit of the Spirit came to mind. Fruit of the Spirit. Anybody have ever heard that term before? Fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. So it brings me back to back in the days when we teach Sunday school and we say to the children, it is like an orange or a tangerine or mandarin, whatever they call it and it is one fruit but it has many pegs right amen so if we are to be fruitful it means that we are supposed to be bearing fruits or reflecting the fruit of the spirit amen what is the fruit of the spirit one might ask and media this time i wanted to project galatians 5 verse 22 and we'll go down to about 25. 25, sorry. Galatians 5 verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. And in the King James Version, you will see the words forbearance or kindness and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control and so on verse 24 goes on to say those who belong to christ jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires since we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit amen so in speaking to the galatians 
Paul, the author of this New Testament book, highlighted the fruit of the Spirit and encouraged the believers to walk in the Spirit and to avoid the things of the flesh. Can you tell me some things that are of the flesh? Lying, stealing, lust. I don't hear anything on this side. Covetousness, unforgiveness, bitterness, adultery, idolatry, and many other things. We can list them. We could stay here all day and list them. So Paul says to the believers, walk in the spirit and avoid the things of the flesh. So if you are to be fruitful, you have to remain in the spirit. Do you agree with me? So if you should look at a tree and say the tree is fruitful, you are insinuating that the tree has a lot of fruits on it. Am I correct? Yeah. Or you are implying that the tree has the tendency to bear fruits in great quantity in its season. As Christians, people are looking on us and they are expecting to see fruits. They are expecting to see fruits. They are expecting to see a difference. They are expecting to see change. They are looking to see what we bring to the table. Some people may say it openly. Me think, say, then since you are Christian, I think you are supposed to behave this way. Or you are not supposed to pass that challenge by now. Right? So some may say it to you openly. Some may bounce it off onto somebody else. And some will just keep it in their mind and have this mental checklist. All right? She should be doing that. She shouldn't be doing that. So they will have a mental checklist in, in mind. Sorry. And you cannot blame them. Because what does the scripture say? If any man be in Christ. Come on, say it. If any man be in Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen. However, trees do not bear fruits overnight. Trees do not bear fruits overnight. It is a process. It is a what? If you plant a seed or a seedling, you cannot expect to see a tree laden with fruits the other day. Come on. A process has to take place. The, yes, yes, my student. So the Cambridge Dictionary defines process as a series of changes that happen naturally. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines process as a natural phenomenon marked by gradual changes that lead toward a particular result. So process happens naturally. Process happens naturally. Process happens within time. Process happens within time. Everyone, every single one of us is going through a process. Now, we are at different points in our process. We are at different points in our process. No two persons are going through the same process. Even if you are twins. You are going through different process. But every single person could be the baby on the breast going through a process. They're go she's going through a process of growth. So every single person is going through a process. Now process has a starting point and an ending point. So a process can be likened to running a race. Right? And Hebrews 12 verse 1 compares the Christian life to running a race. And unfortunately, this race is not a 100 meter dash, nor a 400 meter. It is a long, you say it's in a sister, it's a long marathon. You ever see those persons who are running marathon? Sometimes when they race, they come on and me watch Olympic. Me just go do something until the race finish. Because it is a long race. But guess what? It's an event. And somebody has to run it. Take too long. So that is how our process is. It's lengthy. Boy, you can't take no shortcut with this process. You know? As you find yourself right back to come back in line to where you were. And then you have to continue. So when we start this Christian journey, 
a process begins. A marathon begins. And this process, it don't come with no step-by-step -step guide to say, day one, you're going to do this, day, one, day two, day three, and all of that. It doesn't tell you the fine details of what is going to happen. You're not going to know everything at the initial stage. However, there's a general manual that we can use. What am I talking about? The Bible. And it guides all of us. So guess what? You now have to pull on the Holy Spirit to pick from that manual and to help you to make applications to your personal process. Because it's general. So you now have to pull out the things that speak specifically to your process. Amen. So it is important for you to know the manual. All right. So it is through yielding to the Spirit of God that the fruit of the Spirit are developed in us. Endurance cannot be developed in a 100 meter race. By the you quit, you start, you reach the finish line. No endurance can develop right there. Patience can develop right there. So it takes a process, a long distance race. Amen. So since we are talking about process, chat about. Thank you, thank you. I feel good. Thank you. So since we are talking about process, that's why I love more. more. Let me stop and talk a little bit. Yes, when, yes, when you come to Mount Moor, I've been to many other places. You understand? And when you come to Mount Moor, you can be real. Talk it through. You can be real. You can be yourself. You are treated well. You are treated like family. When you go to some church, nobody not even business with you. So thank you. I'm very grateful for your thoughtfulness. So I'm going to be sharing a little bit and bits of pieces about my process and how God used my process to develop certain fruits in my life. I am far from perfect. Let me put that out there as a disclaimer. I am not perfect. I am very far from perfect. But I am a trying Christian girl who wants to make the best of my life and wants to serve God wholeheartedly. Amen. Anybody agree with me and have, have the same vision and goal? Hallelujah. So, I'm going to be sharing my testimony with you. And I hope that some of the things that I will share, you can identify with it. Or you know of somebody, you can share it with them. And we can grow together. So, I got saved in July 2007. Right? So, I heard that something was taking place at church. And me have a shiny bumper, my short skirt, and big earring, and... Me here say something I keep at church. Me don't know what, but me, me not think me dress for the occasion. But me just here say something I keep, and I put on what I had, and I came. Yes, Pastor Smith. Pastor, remember the details? I don't know. <laughs> and I heard, I think it was Casey Jones who was preaching at the time, and I remember he said, anybody wants to give their life to the Lord, and I don't know what got into me. I put up my hand and I run to the altar. And when the man says, you are now a Christian, I say, what? I started to cry. I said, what me get myself into? So I started to cry. And you know, the whole emotion, it's a, it was a bittersweet feeling. Right? You're, you're crying, but you don't know why you're really crying. But it, I guess it was the joy of the Lord at that time, starting to, you know, develop in me. So a year after, that's 2008, I got baptized. I didn't want to get baptized same time. Come here and say, no man, this has moved too fast. I have to take my time and get to know certain things first. I know what I'm really getting myself into. So I ask a lot of questions. Pastor can tell you. I may ask Wally. I may say, so why did this have to go that way? And I was very logical. Right? But nevertheless, I took another leap of faith in 2008 and I got baptized. No, this was my final year in high school, grade 11. And so it was the same month that I was supposed to graduate. So I get baptized in the same month and graduate in the same month, right? So I said, you know, I have plans. I said, God, yes, when I left high school, because I didn't focus on schoolwork. You know, you want to focus yourself and get what you need to get. And so when I'm done um, high school, I'm going to do what I want to do. 
So I had plans to, you know, go look a party. And if you look at things, you hear people at all, but you are restricted by going to school and you're young and so on. I feel like me a big woman now, I'm done with school. So I was prepared to go and do my own thing. But then God just backed me up in our little corner. So I was basically at a crossroads because I had plans to live my life my way and God had other plans, right? So it was a battle because there were so many voices too. Because even I got baptized, some people were saying, you sure you want to take on that? You sure you can manage? Especially my mother, she said, you sure you can manage this Christian life? You know, easy, you know? And then there were persons in the community who were saying, you know, last long man, show me a give a few months and by the time, cause I look pan so and then call names. Look pan so and so, look pan so and so. You know, so then turn back. Me just a watch you, man. You might give a little time. And brethren, I never want nothing more than that. To push me to prove them wrong. I didn't want anything more than that to say, you know what? I am going to prove because I love to prove people wrong, you know. I love to prove people wrong. And so I say, you know what? I am going to walk this Christian walk. But it's when I just started, I started drifting in the wrong direction. Because there was still a battle going on. I start drift off and going on some path. I mean, I need to go into. But luckily, God sent some persons in my life as mentors. Pastor Smith, big up yourself. Auntie Nikki, big up yourself. Auntie Kami, Uncle Patrick, jeez. And guess what? They work for me, you know, man. They worked on me. They shared the word. The people didn't take me in their home, give me food, bed for sleep on. When they don't make me feel left out, I, I became a part of their family. Sometimes it never think me deserve it, but me just go along. And they showed me love. Because I never understood what, what love really means because I was in a very toxic home environment. I'm just like, yeah, a bad word and this and that. Sometimes I had to close my ears like this to fall asleep. And it happened for many years. Close my ears like this and in the middle of the night, you hear this cussing and argument and you no know, physical fight because you see the fight part now. I had a mom. I have a mom. You see, if you ever put your hand on she. <laughs> So, I was proud of her for that. She stood up. And because of that, I am standing up. But you can't put the hand on me. They could have talked from now till tomorrow. But I learned that from her. So, not the, it was a lot of quarreling, a lot of voices and all that. But guess what? I pushed. I pushed and I tried my best to focus. I tried my best to focus. And so... When I realized that these persons have an interest in my life, I said, if they must show so much interest in me, I have to show some interest in myself and try to go in the right direction. And so I yielded to God's plan for my life. I just said, you know what? God may surrender. Me can't bother with the fighting. There were times when I used to come to the altar. I'm just a poor and I'm a bit of myself and I carry on. I don't know who I carry on with. But guess what? There were moments when I literally felt the spirit just open my hand like this and bring it up in the air. It was a battle, I'm telling you. But I yielded to God's plan. And I started to read my Bible. I started to come to fasting service sometime. I'm the only young person. Sister Mori, I love Sister Mori so much. Um, what's your name again? Sister Owens and listen to me, me love the old people, you know. Me love the seniors. Then can't tell you, me love them, Sister Joyce. Even when time I leave your Sister Joyce texts me and tell me that she love me and trust me. I love the seniors. I love seniors and I respect them highly because I realize and I read it in the Bible that you can learn so much from the seniors because they are experienced people and you can learn a lot from them. So I love seniors. Right? So, I started to come to fasting service. Um, day, Sunday service. Sunday night service. What do you call it? Zone, fa zone meetings. Camp meetings. Anywhere the things are happening spiritu spiritually. I was there as a young Christian girl. Right? So, I started to develop this love and hunger to be in the presence of the Lord. And, of course, I was still being mentored. Right? So, 
I started getting more involved and, you know, teaching Sunday school, children's ministry, youth ministry, and the list, praise and worship, even though I couldn't really sing. But I learned to Uncle Patrick, drill us and teach us. So I got involved. That is the point of everything. You have to get yourself involved so that you can grow spiritually, right? So I continue to, you know, get myself involved. So we are still talking about being fruitful, right? So as I was going through high school, I never considered myself to be a brilliant student. No. I see students all around me, and there is this one particular boy, my ever tap this subject and tap that subject, and me, I say, boy, I wish I could be like him. So I didn't consider myself to be a brilliant student. Yes, I go to school and I do my work and I think I was doing my best. And, you know, I graduated and I got my 8th C-Sec and went to 6th form and did my 4 Cape. And I left high school and I started college, right? But to backtrack a little bit, my high school years at home, brethren, it was so rough. In our show, me today, you know. But back then, master, it was so rough. So when I was going to high school or during that years of my life, let me tell you about the living condition because the part, the other part, they stressed me out. So we were living in a two-room house, right? And then here comes Hurricane Ivan in 2004 and take away one of the rooms, right? Left all five of us in one little room. Can you imagine that? One room making an hardly turn. But it was five of us in that one room. Nano electricity. Yes. So we had to light lamp. That 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007. Modern times those, you know. And this is how we were living, right? Up there, Sir Richard Dahl. In this modern time. No light. No TV. What else? I have them right down here, so let me get back to my... No internet. No electric iron. No gas stove. So what we cook on? Wood fire. You have to go around the back and look wood and we can't do for money to buy coal. We buy coal and we cook on the coal. And guess what? We never have no bathroom inside because we bathroom we got wall in a one little room. So guess what? Sometimes we have to be... No, sometimes. We have to be outside. My beard. <laughs> so I had to bed outside. And then there were these some guys in the car. Sometimes it just feel like they're always in the bush I look for me. Because sometimes they tell you some things and you say, Oh my God. They see me, man. So sometimes I try to find a little corner to bed. But me say, you know what? I have to do it. I don't have a choice. So I do it. So we now have no inside bathroom to bed. Tile it the way out there, sir. Virgin, may I tell you? Mm. Rough. And so, I, I just made my, I just know that th that is my situation, and I just work with it. I worked with it. And so, I started cooking for my family at, um, in grade eight, you know, your mackerel and rice, and because we never have no money for buying our know, meat, and, and we're going to put the meat anyways. We don't have no fridge. So, it was very rough, but I did what I had to do because it was the only means of survival. And guess what? God always make a way for us. He always made a way. And let's guess what? I learned to turn my hand and make fashion. You see, even till today, you see if my guess done, and an easy thing for me to jump on the back and make up for and fire and cook when I have to cook on it. Because that is what I'm used to. Right? And so, I, I realized that God was doing something in my life I'm going to say, you know what? I am just going to go through. Sometimes it feels so embarrassed. I'm going to say, God, I beg you do. No, me, none of my um, classmates are so come home. No way up here, son. Go and see where I am living because I don't know if I go back to St. Catherine High School. I was so ashamed. I was so embarrassed. My, it, 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 it made me feel stressed out more well. You understand? But when I got saved in 2000 and seven i was the, about what grade 10 grade 11 i started to see things differently i started to see things differently because by now you are seeing through the eyes of jesus and so 
I was still experiencing the lifestyle, the hard lifestyle, but there was a difference because my faith started to grow and I started to understand that my situation could not define me. My situation could not define me. And so I started to believe and I, I believe that if I continue to serve the Lord, then he, he was going to change my situation around. So I started to, to just invest more in my spiritual life because there was nothing I felt I could do physically. So I had to pull on heaven and the resources to, to just go through. So I started to understand that, you know what? This part of my journey... God was developing long suffering, patience, peace, endurance, contentment. Because believe it or not, I had to be contented. What may I go do? I had to be contented with what I have and where I was until change comes. Right? So I just work with God. And sometimes I still get depressed and all about the mentors, the cheerleaders were there to cheer me on. And I know God was developing my faith and obedience when I was at Chartwood. Right? So I get into college. I went to college to do primary Spanish. You know why I went to do primary Spanish? Because I love Spanish. And because at the time, the program was subsidized by the government. So I never have to pay no whole heap of money. Right? So when I went to Charlotte, the people then take me up and put me in an early childhood program. And then now, because I knew that the government was going to subsidize the Spanish program, I said, all right, at least I won't have to find a whole heap of money. When they took me and put me in an early childhood program, I have to find the whole of the school fee. And guess what? Me never have a dollar. But God, he set, up, he set me up. Because the principal allowed me. Let me go to the principal. The man tired for seeing my face. I said, sir, I don't have no money. <laughs> <laughs> and Auntie Nikki talked to him and he gave me deadline after deadline. And said, you have to pay it by X time. But guess what? I didn't have any source. You know? I did not have any source to go to and say, give me 10,000 or give me 5,000. Well, I had source. But pastor, you know that part ago. I was on my own, basically. But I think it was a part of God's plan. So when I ask certain people for money, they nobody look for me. But it was a part of God's plan. And so I finished first year. I may not pay no school fee. Who could it be but God? But when I reached the last lap and I was supposed to do exam, the man said, the principal said, you know, I don't know exam till you pay some money. So I ended up missing one um, exam. But after that, he may have mercy again and say, all right, go do the rest of the exam. So I ended up being so very successful in those first year courses. And then the man tell me, say, you see, if you're not know, paying no school, you know, but I'll come back September, you know. So brethren, I did not go back to September. I felt so embarrassed. I say, you know what? I'm not like embarrassment, you know, because I know me come from an embarrassing situation already. So I said, I'm not going back. But there was this minister, Pastor Green, who came to do some series of Bible studies, and the man saw something in me. And he paid for me to do some counseling session. Because by this time, me tangled up and wrap up and stressed out and everything, you know, and not functioning well, you know. And the man paid for me to do 10 weeks of counseling and deliverance. And I started to go there, and the lady said to me, you say, if you know, go up a short road, now come back to my office. The woman bad me up. So I ended up going back to Chartwood the October. And be, lo and behold, it's a different principal. Elaine Foster Allen, big up her, big her up, big her up. That woman take me under her wing. She said to me, why you never come earlier? But oh, if you know, say principal change, the man said me not to come back. <laughs> the Lord shifted, but I never know that he was shifting it because I wasn't going up there. So when I went, the lady said, she looked at my transcript and she said, but you did so well in the first year courses. I don't want you to be sitting down because the semester started already. I don't want you to sit down and not doing anything. Then the woman take her phone personally and call Mount Moreland and say, Miss Lee, 
I beg you, take this young lady and make she come there for the year. And I went to Mount Mulan for one year and volunteer, Miss Angela. Nobody never knew. Everybody thinks, why well, she get teaching job them at Mount Mulan? They don't even know half of the story. And I didn't make them anyways. So I went there and I volunteered for the year. And I did what I have to do. And when prize giving, I hear them say they might call me for prize giving because oh, I top the courses in the first year. And only one course met me not go by the principal and I roll for the first year. I said, God, look at that thing. From a struggling situation, it caused me to excel so much. But fast forward some more. Um, I went back and I did my studies. Try and, try and see where I should have to challenge it. Hard to find school fee and all of that. But I made it through. And at the end of my tenure, that is when I pay my school fee. Can you believe that? Me can't explain it, brethren. Me can't explain it. Only God alone know. But he enabled me to go through by his favor and his grace. And I was able to pay the school fee in full when me don't study. But I had to pay it because I want to graduate. I want to so God work out something and I was able to pay it. And then I got scholarships and all of that. And... That was that. So God caused me, even though I was struggling and it was challenging to excel, and I was on the principals on a roll for the two other years. And I mean, I topped so many courses, and it was only God. And guess what? I wasn't selfish because even when I was there, and there were so many students who were struggling, and God would cause me to help. You have some people at college, they are senior and then years, you know, they don't know a thing what go on. And when they get the assignment, they just don't know what to do. And God will just lead me to, to, to these persons and I will help them with their assignment. Even when mine are reaching away, you know. Basically, by the time I help three and four of them and I go back to mine, I just breeze through it. Because I get an understanding through explaining and helping. I get an understanding of how to do mine. And bridging. I try to be more deliberate in living my Christian life at college. So I was a little bit out there and I was a little bit reserved because when they were voting me and trying to vote me to become college president and third year president, I said, no, no, no. I don't go so far. I don't want out so much because my school fee not pay. I don't want you know, the limelight. So I declined those positions, Bridget. But what I could do on the ground, I did it. Right? So I joined the UCCF and we, we have prayer meetings and, you know, we go to the dorms and we pray for people. And I, I was still building my Christian life, but I didn't want to be so outright for them to come call out my name. Because they used to put up their name, you know. When they pay school for them, put it up on board. You know, in a pretty. So, you know, one day say, college president not pay our school fee. So I shun those things. But now I'm looking back and I'm saying, probably if I had taken up this position and they know that you are the college president, probably they would say, all right, pay half of the school fee. Or they would look out for me. But the devil not allowing you to see those things. They're not, the devil is not going to allow you to see the good in any situation at all. He's just going to show you the bad part of it. So I'm reflecting now and saying, if I had become the third year president and like a past student want to give back and say, call the school and say, you know any student want any assistant, probably they would call up my name. But the devil does not show you the good part in anything. He doesn't have anything good to show anybody. He always shows you the negative side of things. And so... I was just going through and, you know, faith again. I was at college one day and I didn't have any um, grocery. And I heard the voice of the Lord says, make up a grocery list. And brethren, by that time, I don't really question, you know, me just move. I make up the list and I write on the things that I wanted because I didn't have any money. And by that evening, a church sister called me and said, Anna, I am in the parking lot with some grocery for you. Who could it be but God? Who could it be but God? Bridget, I'm telling you. So I started to develop my faith and I started to believe. And I realized that the more I believe and the more I listen, you have to keep your ears open to the leading of the, the voice of the Holy Spirit. You have to keep your ears open. No matter what you're going through, and know you're struggling, the enemy wants to crowd your mind and crowd your thoughts so you cannot hear when to move. But despite everything, I try my very best to open my ears to the Spirit. Amen. And so, 
I used to be a person who would say anything going to come out of my mouth. Me hear it, I'm going to spit it out. You know, that's not good. It's not good. And some people that say, I saw me stay here and I saw me stay here. Me don't want to stay so. I don't want to stay like that. Because guess what? It can get you into problems. And when you get into the problems, sometimes it's hard to come out and sometimes you don't come out at all. So I was the type of person who loved to just talk anything, come to my mind, I don't think about it. I just spit it out and then you can't take it back. So God has helped me by his grace to, ch to change that part of me. So I was able to work with this lady. I you know, do this lady nothing, you know. But is it that experience, uh, that is the experience with cement this part of me in terms of not answering to certain things. The lady would just look at me and say, I don't want to like you. <laughs> I'm not working with you. And then, he's a principal and I'm the secretary. You are not in charge. Me say, Miss, I do not want to be in charge. I'm just here to help you. <laughs> Get out of my office. And the woman that carry on and on. You man, boy, may I tell you. You know what I had to do? I have to bite my lip. I have to bite my lip and swallow the words that we want to come up to say to her. And it, when, me, when me go in the mornings and I don't want to say good morning, I say, good morning, so and so. She said, after six months, the lady don't say good morning to me. I see me every morning, good morning. And she said, I can't take you. And she talks on something. But you see, when I, when, you see, even though this was going on, you know, it put a weight on me, you know, it put a weight on me. So I came to church. That is where I let it off. But come on my ball. And pastor know about it, you know. He said, I forgot to work a morning time. I say, oh, I'd forget to put on my bed. Because I know what I was going to. But I just went through that process. I went through. And then God just moved me. You see, by the time God ready to move me, me all right. Me all right. She could have said anything she want. I got to a place where... I was so comfortable with her saying whatever she wanted to say about me. Because I got to learn who I am and why I was there. That is very important. You know, when you're at a place and certain things are happening, you have to say, you know what? God, I must something got to develop in me. So. I must, God, no, sir, this can't be it. One of the times the lady said to me, say, you can't go nowhere else, go work. This is like she actually tell me, say, this is it. This is my bread and butter. I say, but this not so right. I saw it as serving because even though this lady, lady was carrying on, she couldn't do without me at the time, you know. She couldn't do without me at the time because I may do all of our work. And she had carry on with me this way. So, but I started to look at her and say, so, God, I know you're working through this lady to develop something within me. And so I started to take it gracefully. And then I, I left. I went into a new situation. I may, let me tell you, backtrack a little bit. You see, at that place, I may, I may get the least pay. So I see people in pay stuff a month time. I say, I say, God, you know, it doesn't make sense me there years ago. Thir I, you can remember, $30,000 per month. Because I went there to assist, to be a teacher assistant. And when I went to the class, the lady decided, she's not the principal, you know, the principal was on leave at the time. She decided that she's going to split the class in half and give me half. So me a full teacher. So what I should have done, I know that, I know me, I think back on these things, you know. I should have gone back and say, hey, I have my own class. So money I fit top up, I mean, I assist, got 30,000 assistant pay. But I did not go back. I say, you know what? That's another thing. God is, is preparing me. I'm giving me one class. So when I got my own class, I know how to do and what to do. So I don't complain. I take the little 30000 But guess what, brethren? You see, from I was working there until I left there, I was never out of money. I was never out of money. I pay my tithes every month. That's the next thing in a brethren. It's from I start work until today day, I tithe every Every single month. One month I miss it and I feel like say, something bad I got up. I tied every single month. It is very important to give God what he deserves. Because I remember this message that says it's better to have a blessed 99. Blessed 90 than a curse 10. I never forgot that message there. Something like that. Um, <laughs> So I 
I, from my, if, if I get if I get ten ten dollar, I'm going to put down my tithes out of it. It's a very, it is very important to give the Lord what He deserves. Amen? Amen. So that is one of the principles that has guided me throughout my life. And apart from giving to God, I look for opportunities to give. And I'm not gonna put it up on social media. And I'm not going to put it up on Facebook. I'm going to take no picture. I don't want nobody to see what I'm giving. And to be honest with you, I give as God leads. I'm going to want to broadcast. That is me. I don't know what my left hand, no, what my right hand doing. And it's biblical. So sometimes I see people giving and them up. I say, then what is that fear put up on? If you give somebody something, give them. So I make it a part of my journey to give. And I don't just give to my family alone. I give to outsiders. Sometimes you can't make your family know where I give. Because they might say, then you don't see what I need right here. So how you going out there? So go and give. And that is why I don't want the broadcasting business. Because it will get you and your family into problem. And you don't want to easy man, skiz him. So I let the Lord lead me in even giving. So kindness, that's another fruit of the spirit. Giving, learning to give your time and your resources and give a helping hand. We must make it our point of duty to give. Because I see how God gives to us freely. We ought to give to others as well. And so, I would consider myself to be a kind person. But I wasn't a kind person all along. It's since I'm in Christ and realize how oh, people even give into my life. Because when I used to come to church and camp, um, camp, teens camp and all that. It was the same members here who said, let me send this girl to camp. And I didn't have to pay a dollar so I am even grateful for you, my church brethren. Maybe not the same set here, no. But they really invested in me as a young person. When they have uh, kind of meetings all over the place and, you know, we get a little pocket money from these same brethren. And I talk about more than all the time because these are the things that I, I've experienced. And I don't experience it nowhere else. They're more of a pull, 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 pull from you rather than giving to you. And so I am humbled at everything that God has been doing in my life. Um, trust me. But I say, I don't want to be proud. I don't want to be proud. I don't want to want to be proud i do not i do not want to behave like I'm better than anybody. People look at me and tell me, say, me go on like me better than people. I say, me. I say, me. How oh, me go on like me better than people? Knowing where I am coming from. But I don't make that bother me because if they, me ever sit down and tell them my story, I better then change their mindset. But I don't have the time to be telling everybody. But I am humbled, let me say this, I am humbled at where God has taken me from and where he is taking me. Right? I remember I used to have only one pair of slippers coming to church and I eat me where I got Spanish stuff. Everyone may have got me one pair because I eat alone me have. Right? And when I look back now, I can see some of my papier. Sometimes they dry rotten. I'm not, not saying I'm a one in dry rotten. You know. <laughs> but I'm just making a point to say you can't wear all of them one time. Right? So you, you look back and you say you had one pair of shoes. Now you have many pairs. Remember, we not even have lotion for lotion with footwear for use. What we use? Ear oil and. Sometimes cooking aisle. Me, me know about them something there. And when I look at my dresser, I'm so much lotion pan it. Me say, God, you're good. So my mother come, me say, Mommy, just take up anything where you want, man. And my sister come. <laughs> me say, take up. Because guess what? It come like nothing to me to have so much and somebody else not have none. No, man, you share. Right? So I am really grateful. Even public transportation, I say, boy, may I tell you, I hear a taxi with a passion and my eight bus. May I tell you the truth? Because when you're going on the taxi and people feel a rub up on you, sometimes people not really, they don't really um, practice personal hygiene. Let me put it a nice way. And they are rub up on, and they don't know if you fix themselves, now they're not spread off on you. And then people have to sit down on my lap because I used to thin in body. I have to sit down on somebody like that. They say, smile up yourself. I say, God, one day, one day. And then going to Kingston, now they call J JUTC bus in the mornings and the coast. And you have to stand up because you can't get no seat. I say, God, one day, one day. I have to get my own vehicle, you know. I have to get my own vehicle. And God bless me. And I was able to purchase my own vehicle in 2013. And you know, you drive it and you give God thanks. And then the other day, I was able to purchase another one. Yeah. Virgin, God is good to me. 
God is good to me. You see that vehicle out there, so a four pints up me worth, you know. And I wrote down, because that is the next thing I love to write. I like to write down things. I wrote down in my diary that I want a vehicle and it must not be less than three pint. I don't remember three pint what I said. And but that is the vehicle I wanted. Amen. And then when I went to the car mart and the man tell me how much for the vehicle, I said, Sir, I'm a teacher, you know. And you know, say government now treat me so well, so I beg you do something for me. And I say, hey man, give me a price, and I give him back a price. Can I negotiate? I go there for negotiate. Because I don't want to pay. I tell you, I don't want to pay. And the man bring down the price. I say, God. Yes, when he bring it up, I say, all right, we are still right as so, man. I me, me sort out the paperwork and come back to you. I say, almost every other day after that, I call the man, you know, because I don't want to give you the vehicle. I say, me sort out the paperwork, man. You don't sell it yet. He said, no, I say, I teach you, you know. He said, no, teacher, I'm not sell it. And brethren, I am giving God thanks that he just made the process so smooth and I was able to acquire the vehicle and pay for the paperwork and who could it be but God? Who could it be but God? God, is, God has been good to me. He has been good to me and he continues to be faithful and I, I just trust him daily. I, whenever I come up on challenges, I'm not back down, you know. Hello. You know, back down. I don't back down. Because guess what? I know that I have to go across these ergles because we said that we are in a race, right? You're in a race, all kind of things can happen along the way. You're going to see things dropping in your pathway, where you're going to turn back because you see a little stone in your way. No, is there move the stone or you go over the stone or, and you continue moving because you want to reach your destination, right? So the devil is going to put all kind of something in your pathway. Sickness, children are going to problem, co-worker are going to problem. All kind of things is going to put in your pathway. But see, once you make up your mind and say you're going to do this, he's going to provide the help that you need to go through. And you don't have to compromise. You don't have to compromise. Right? Because God is always making provisions for you. You need to just explore your options. Say, all right, what if I can't do this? And, and guess what? Bridget, not because you're a Christian, you're going to think you're going to stay in the spirit. You're going to look, at it, you're going to look and say, all right, we need to get a vehicle. God, me a prayer. More one vehicle. More one vehicle. You know, take up yourself and go fill out the licensing form and go get your license. And you can't just say you want one vehicle. You want one vehicle. You can't drive vehicle. You think God will give you a vehicle and you can't drive a vehicle. That God, God makes sense, you know. He do it sometimes, but those are unique situations. Let me, not, let me say, miraculous and unique situations do occur. But I'm just making a point to say, you have a part to play. Faith without work, yes, is dead. So we have a part to play in our process, in being obedient, in moving when he says to move, in giving when he says to give, and just to be obedient overall. If God said, groan and jump down there, so, you're going to say, me? Me, me pass them the stage a long time. If God said, Anna, go climb the tree down there, so I'm ready a long time. Because I've seen God work in my life in so many ways. Mister, I remember when we used to do summer NYS program. Talk about it already. Um, and I used to earn like ten thousand dollars per per in the summer. And this particular summer, me, me submit my application on time, you know. And the lady I go tell me say the application closed. But me say, but not today. You know, say the deadline. I'm there with the application. She said, no, it closed off. I'm me not argue with her. I was, I was a little bit down, and I put my earphone on my ears, and I said, it's like the Spirit said, no worry yourself. All things work together for good. And Bridget, I said, that summer, I got another opportunity. I'm not going to details. I got another opportunity, and I earned $100,000 that summer. <laughs> I said, God, if I know you this, I don't know who. But these are the experience that tells me. You see, when things don't work out for me and I kill them my part, you think me worry myself? I know that something better is coming. Something bigger is coming. So I don't worry when things don't work out my way. Yes, I might feel a little weird, yes. But I, I am just confident in God to know that he is going to make a different way. Somebody just 
go on with joy and say, God, you know, I work it out this way, but you know best. You have to know that God knows best for you. He knows what, best, what is best for you. And you have to trust the process, right? So I'm just encouraging someone today. You might be going through your process. You, you feel discouraged at times. Um, you want to give up. You say, no, sir, this will take too long. Remember, process has a starting point and it has an ending point. You might not know the ending. You, know, you might know the starting point. You know when it starts. But you might not know the ending point. But guess what? Just know that it has an ending point. And it will end. It will come to an end. The scripture says, um, weeping may last for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. The, you don't know what? The night might long. But guess what? Morning always fall a night. So mar your morning will come. Your morning will come. So don't compromise. Don't, sh don't be distracted. Keep focus. Keep on holding on. And guess what? You cannot do it by yourself. In this process, in this race of life, nobody try to do it by yourself. Because guess what? You have a, you have a great help. Amen. Why not use the help? You have God on your side. Why try to do it on your own when you have God on your side? Come on. That's ridiculous. So pull on God. Pull on the persons that God placed around you to help you. Because God used people to. Sometimes we don't realize that God is using the person beside us to help us. So you have to be cognizant that he has made provisions. And guess what? You have cheerleaders cheering you on because them can't run the race for you, you know. They cannot. So you have to just accept the cheer. You know, you're running sports there. You're tired, but the cheer, where they cheer, you just feel an like extra energy to go on. So, brethren, that's my few words to you this morning. And I trust that you were blessed by them. I trust that you were encouraged. And I know that you can make it. I know that you can make it because if I am making it, I don't reach, I don't reach it, you know, I don't reach. If I am making it, I know that you will make it. So God bless you. These are my few words in Jesus' name.